Sun City recently played host to the sixth round of the SA Off-Road Car Racing Championship presented by Absa. Yay! The big day had arrived, and as is the norm, there were last-minute preparations before the crews headed out into the arid Pilonsberg area. Richard Schilling had his own support group. Off-road racing rates high in the Glamour Stakes. Navigation can actually be a deciding factor in the race. Yes, they will struggle a lot in the time trial. Um, although they have obviously marked the route, there's a lot of tracks and things like that here. So it's a question of using the route schedule and combination of the stickers and also being able to read the road, anticipate where you think the route's going to go. We had a good uh, qualifying yesterday um, and I think if I see there's not a lot of wind, I think uh, we're going to be okay in the front. The other guys are going to probably eat our dust if we don't get any punctures uh, within the first hour. We had a small pie on board with one of the hair dryers we uh, used to uh, use the demit for the front windscreen and it's uh, caught fire and we had to stop and, and put it out and uh, it's one of those things but um, hopefully they, 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 they find this morning and uh, we won't have the same problem. Now we're in third position, I would have liked to have been a little bit closer but uh, unfortunately we, we had a steering pump problem and uh, the new steering pump only arrived from France on Wednesday so once again I haven't been able to get in the car since Tarkistad so to not, not sit in the car for a month and then suddenly put up a, a, a good time. The Nissan guys are testing all the time, you know, with their overseas program and local program. So we were a little bit off the pace yesterday, both Kenny and I are a little bit rusty. So not exactly where I would like to be. I'd like to be up in front because the dust is going to be horrendous today. It really is. But um, yeah, it's, it's okay. We had a clean run yesterday. The car is overheating a bit because of the hassles. But our strategy for today is just to take it easy on the first loop. It's one of three loop race and then to really go for it in the second and third loop once we know where we're going. The aerial visuals are courtesy of the Coppelman Hotel medical and TV helicopter. Krobler and Leek led the way in the 64 starters and had a distinct advantage and that they would have no dust problems provided of course they weren't overtaken by anyone. This Donga section proved to be a problem for many crews in the prologue and would have to be traversed three times during the main event. Foss and Griffith were next away in the proudly South African Nissan hardbody and despite the fact that they had a 28 second dust gap on their teammates, visibility in the hanging dust proved to be an early problem. Woolridge and Shorthammer were a further minute behind in the Team Ford Racing Ranger which allowed the dust to clear and give them a small advantage over Foss and Griffith. and Jordan would have to make up over two minutes on leaders Hrobla and Leek and had Reineke and Houghton one second behind them at the start. A large crowd had turned out to witness the high-speed spectacle in the Polonsberg and would not be disappointed. Kern Houghton had already dropped back because of the dust and trailed the Villiers and Jordan by 18 seconds within a few kilometers of the start. Mark Corbett and Jason Brewer led away the next seven starters in the Century Property Developments Bat, all of whom were special vehicles. to 
is a former special vehicle driver's champion and returned to competition earlier this year after taking delivery of the first customer bat, while arch rivals Harat and Kruby Duplessis were one of eight husband and wife pairings in the Sun City 400. No doubt Zane Noble and Richard Hope would rather be languishing beside the pool than messing around in the dust. Nodders Alberts and Colin Hunter started 90 seconds behind Noble and had the benefit of a temporarily dust-free route, but all that would change as he set about carving his way through the field in the Rapsa race go. That was back racing pair Gary Beltolt and Brandon Harkis emerging from the dust followed by Rashid and Faisal Noble who were causing a bit of a traffic jam behind them. Warren Bowie were on charge and closing in on teammate Gareth Walk and they are Hagen's Coppenhagen Hotel Mighty Mag but bogged down on the hairpin that had proved to be a problem for so many crews. Class E Championship contender Schroeder and Peckham could have done without this delay so early in the race. Class F Championship leaders Jab Ziemann and Johannes Barwise got themselves into all kinds of trouble at the hairpin. The aging two-wheel drive Ford Cortina just couldn't make its way up the steep incline. Terence Marsh and Trevor Ayer damaged the Nashua Mobile Jimco soon after the start of the prologue and started 48th. Class A championship contenders John Moore and Fred Berner had problems during the prologue and started 49th in the Shoal Connick's Chenoweth. Raul Gomez and Pascal Atuka, who were making their national championship debut, also got it all wrong at the hairpin. Reigning Class B champions Marcus Taylor and Mark de Chalane had suspension problems in the prologue and started the main event in 54th place. An exasperated Barwise just couldn't understand why no competitor had offered to tow the stricken Cortina out of its sandy grave. Andre Buerta and Beans Heidenrich took advantage of their rival's dilemma and grabbed the Class F lead in the Ergens Coppenon Hotel Super Team Chevy. Hannes Frobler and Richard Leek had opened a commanding lead over the rest of the field. The proudly South African Nissan crew were in total control with the veteran rally and off-road champions reveling in the conditions. Teammates Duncan Foss and Mike Griffith have finally got to grips with the more powerful Class T Nissan after moving up from Class D at the start of the season. However, the reigning production vehicle champions had lost time due to a persistent misfire, which materialized soon after the start of the event. Right, right, hard run, hard run, hard run, hard run. Right. Look out, yeah, lift. Woolridge and Shortimer were handily placed in the Team Ford Racing Ranger and just waiting for an opportunity to close the gap on the leading Nissans. With the handling and performance of the Ford now near perfect, the former Roof of Africa winners on two and four wheels posed the biggest threat to the triumphant Nissan squad.
De Villiers and Jordan were fourth in the proudly South African Nissan Hardbody. They were close enough to Woolridge and Saltheimer for the Ford's dust to be a bit of a problem. Reinecke and Houghton were trailing in fifth place. The handling problems on the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser were now a thing of the past, and they were finally capable of mounting a challenge for the lead.